There has been one project on my to build list that has been there pretty much since I first started to really get into prop making, and that is a fully functioning chopper. And today is the day that we finally start this project. Now there is no way I'm gonna be able to build this entire droid start to finish in this one video, but I can start printing the pieces and hopefully give you a realistic look at what actually goes into one of these astromech projects. Because spoiler alert, it is a lot. I don't think anything will come close to the amount of parts that I I need to print for this single project. So with all that being said, let's get started on this droid. I'll be using Mr. Badley's live action chopper files for my build. I always assumed I'd be making the Rebels version, but I really love the extra details on the live action one. I also had the chance to actually see the droid in person and take a bunch of reference pictures of it, which means if I want to replicate it down to the seemingly visible layer line still on the dome, I can. Welcome to this still very much unfinished workshop, so please excuse the mess. I'm still reorganizing organizing everything, but over here we have something very, very exciting. This is the brand new Q1 Pro that Kitty very kindly sent over early for me to test out, and as you can see right now it is printing one of Chopper's foot shells. Unfortunately not the most exciting piece to see printing, but it does look like it's doing a beautiful job of it so far. But the plan is to print Chopper completely out of ABS unless any of the specific pieces call for a different material. This machine has some incredible features and specs that are going to make it absolutely perfect for printing these droid pieces in ABS. It's got a heated chamber, which means all of these parts should be warp-free and print beautifully. It has a bimetal nozzle, which means that I should be able to print any type of filament on the same nozzle without needing to switch it out. So if any of the pieces I feel like should be made out of nylon or another type of carbon fiber filament, then I should be able to just switch the filament, you know, obviously use the appropriate setting but not actually need to put a hardened steel nozzle or like make any adjustments to the nozzle or tool head, which is incredibly convenient. I cannot wait to spend a ton of time with this machine on this project. As I've mentioned, there is no shortage of pieces in this build. I'm sure most sane people would probably focus on one area of the droid at a time, but I'll be looking at printing all of the main structure pieces and then worry about the mechanical and more decorative pieces later. I decided to use Orga Slicer one, because I've generally had great success with it, but two, because of the multi-plate feature. It meant I could select all of the parts for one section of chopper, import the models into the slicer, and be able to arrange the pieces over the multiple plates to make sure that I didn't accidentally miss printing anything. It is such a useful feature to have for complex builds like this. Even though this is such a large print project, all of the pieces are separated into parts that can fit on a 200 millimeter sized printer. The Q1 Pro has a 245 millimeter cubed build volume, so that is more than enough to fit everything. I specifically decided to use white ABS for the pieces because I wanted the inside of the droid to be clean looking and easy to see into in the future. The body is basically this barrel that all of the electronics are wired into, so between the initial setup and then any possible maintenance in the future, I wanted to make sure that the wiring and everything would be as visible as possible. I ended up using the same ABS settings that I use for my other KD printers, and the pieces seem to be printing out very well. Some areas can sometimes look a bit melted, but that's perfectly fine with me. When it comes to printing ABS on fast machines, you can run the risk of layers not bonding together very well and having the pieces be incredibly breakable along the layer lines. If it looks like the plastic is melted, it means the bond is strong, and for a future functioning droid, strength is unbelievably important. That's also why you'll see more support material than would be necessary in a lot of cases, because you can't be running the parts cooling fans the same speeds as if you were using a different type of filament. Now, I do have a bit of a head start, no pun intended, but at the beginning of the year I had some downtime, so I did manage to get all of Chopper's main dome frame printed, which is what all of these orange pieces are. These are all printed in orange ABS on my X plus 3, but overall these pieces printed beautifully. They're a little melty in some areas because I was experimenting with my ABS settings when I was working on these, but still really, really nice looking pieces. Now, because I have all of these dome pieces done, I do actually think I'm going to go ahead and look at assembling this into one piece. I know it goes against my typical rule of keeping things in as small a pieces as possible while you're post-processing them, but because this is ABS, it's going to be a lot easier to post-process. I do think it's going to be better for the entire droid if I assemble these, make sure that everything lines up appropriately, and then worry about the entire single unit with post-processing and, you know, filling in any gaps and making sure that it's all just very 
very well assembled. The other benefit to having these pieces be printed in ABS is it means that I can chemically weld them all together. That should make the bonds between all of the parts a lot stronger than if I was to use some sort of adhesive on another type of material. To do this, I used MEK or methyl ethyl ketone and acetone. Technically, either of these on their own probably would have worked fine, but the combination of them I'm hoping will be even better. The MEK really melts into the ABS fast, whereas acetone it takes a little longer and sometimes requires a bit more work. The MEK can almost over melt the plastic though, which is why I didn't just want to use that on its own. I put some MEK in a refillable felt marker pen thing and started by running that along and into the holes on the sides of the pieces. The holes are for adding pieces of filament into to help line everything up. I also used ABS for this in hopes that it will dissolve in the holes and bind everything together even further. I then took my acetone slurry mixture to use as almost more of a glue. This is just some extra ABS from the support material mixed into some acetone. The acetone causes the ABS to dissolve and it creates this paste. The thickness will vary depending on how much ABS you add into the mixture. I'm hoping that using the slurry mixture will not only help melt the parts together, but also fill in some of the gaps between the pieces to create a stronger bond. There is also these small bone-shaped pieces to add to help line everything up. I also went along the seams on the inside with some more MEK and acetone to try and fill in the gaps a little more to create a stronger bond. I'll be using more of the acetone slurry later on in the build as well to help with smoothing and post-processing. For the sides of the head, I specifically chose to build them onto the top piece instead of separately to avoid running the risk of the two sections not lining up or fitting together later. Overall, the pieces seem to have been fitting together very well, which is obviously a great sign since there are so many individual components that need to work together for this build to be successful. Here's what the head looks like put together. Some pretty bad seams that I'll have to smooth out in the future, but overall everything seemed to have lined up well, so I'm feeling pretty good about how things will be fitting together for the rest of the droid. Here we have an absolutely insane amount of pieces organized to the best of my ability so that I don't accidentally mix anything up because there's just so many pieces to worry about to keep track of. I'm not even sure if this really is doing it justice for how many pieces this is, but there's one piece finishing printing right now and then that should be the entire main frame of Chopper finished, which is very exciting. So in this first bucket, this is the lower ring and some of the other body pieces sort of going from the bottom up. This is the rest of the body and also the skirt. That is the left leg and that is the right leg. And also the foot covers and battery boxes are in each of those as well for each leg. This isn't like put together at all. I just sort of slotted the pieces together to see how they fit, which they fit beautifully. So I cannot wait to actually assemble those permanently. You know, I was excited about finally having a leg finished. So I wanted to see what it looked like all together. So like I've mentioned, this is no greeblies, no smaller details. I really just want to worry about the main frame structure for now. That is enough parts to deal with. This is over 10 kilograms of ABS, I know. I finished up a part of a three kilogram roll and I have gone through almost two full five kilogram rolls, but I've also gotten into the third five kilogram roll. So we're probably around the 10 to 15 kilograms of ABS mark here. And that is not including the head because the three and five kilogram rolls were all of the white filament. Of course, I'm still not done yet, which makes this my second most used filament project after dear old K2 that's in the corner over here, which was a nice 20 kilograms. So I'm gonna go through and see how many of these parts I can actually consider assembling, even if it's like the top ring I can put together, but then some of the body parts I know are going to be better left disassembled until I start looking at electronics. So we're just going to go through and start actually assembling this droid to as much as I possibly can at the moment so that we can end this video with something a little more exciting looking than four piles of droid parts. I printed all of the pieces with a brim, so the first thing I did was remove that from all of the parts. I tend to use a brim anyway, but especially for ABS pieces, it's important to minimize any possible warping. I'd much rather use a little extra plastic at the beginning than have to completely reprint a piece because a corner lifted. I can also recycle all of this later into ABS slurry. The bottom of Chopper's body went together a little like a puzzle with the tabs that slotted together, which was super fun to assemble. They're also numbered, so that was really easy to figure out what should go where. 
For the upper body pieces, I added a few grub screws into the holes to help line everything up. I only put a few in here and there for this test fit, but these are something that will be part of the final assembly. There are also a couple of M3 nuts and bolts that I added in to help pull the panels together better and keep them more aligned. But for the most part, all of these pieces were just sitting there and they were sitting together really well considering just sort of how minimally everything is being held together at this point and that there isn't any of the internal frame that I printed yet. When I go to actually assemble the body, I think I'm going to first sand down the front parts of all of the body pieces before looking at gluing anything together. Both legs slotted together really smoothly with those tabs like the bottom ring of the body has. And the final thing was to sit the dome on top of the body and add the antenna. It's honestly pretty crazy to actually see a chopper in my workshop since this has been a project that I've been wanting to work on for so long. The pieces all printed out beautifully and test fitting went super smoothly, which means none of these pieces have any obvious warping or any issues of that nature. It is being very minimally held together by hardware right now. So there are a few little gaps here and there, but I think that's something that would just naturally happen anyway. And is also, I think something that will improve once I do actually start working on building the body and assembling it for real and not having it do the sort of wild circular Jenga tower situation that it's doing right now. But overall, it seems like everything is fitting together really well. Clearly have most of the main structure, although this is not even all of the pieces that I did print in the last few weeks. I still have all of the foot and like smaller leg pieces, but by the time that I actually got the skirt built and underneath the body, I realized that I was gonna run out of a desk height. So these legs are just both sitting here on the side and it just so happens that they almost line up to where they should actually be attached to the body. But it is still really cool to be able to see all of these pieces together since they haven't looked particularly exciting coming off of the printer. But all together, it really does make this entire droid. That being said, all of the pieces that I've printed so far possibly only make up about 60% of the total pieces that are going into this droid between different servo arms, and then all of the little details and greebly bits that have to go on not only the body but of course the feet and everything and I mean he doesn't even have eyes yet yeah ton of printing to still do all of the prep work to still do for these pieces but this is a very exciting start to see a massive thank you again to Kitty for sending over the Q1 Pro and for helping me start this dream droid project obviously there's still a ton of work to do to bring Chopper to life and it's definitely going to be something that I bring you all along for. But that is everything. So thank you so much for watching and Chopper and I will see you in future videos.